Honda's gone hybrid with the new HRV small SUV. So you're gonna save fuel, but it's gonna cost you more to buy. Does the equation add up? Let's go and find out. The third generation HRV replaces a model that was exceptionally popular in Australia, selling about 75,000 examples. But Honda isn't expecting sales to be as big this time round, with pricing for the hybrid starting at $45,000 drive away. It's all part of a new no-haggle premium pricing pitch. By the way, this car has a name complex enough to be one of Elon Musk's kids, E colon HEV L. From this point on, it's just the HRV hybrid, I reckon. It's hard to imagine the HRV being mistaken for too many other cars on the road today. That slatted grille is distinctive, it sits way up high on 18 inch alloy wheels and has a 195 mm ground clearance. That's getting into true SUV territory. But don't get too ambitious off-road because this petrol electric drivetrain only powers the front wheels and is more focused on road. The two electric motors help save fuel and provide more pulling power than your average small SUV. The HRV comes with a continuously variable automatic transmission that includes a brake mode to regenerate power for the lithium ion battery when coasting and braking. The HRV hybrid is a pretty expensive small SUV and first impressions of the interior are pretty positive when you drop into the bolstered seat and take in the piano black trim. But when you notice the driver's seat is manually rather than power adjustable and the seat centers are cloth, it's not quite as upmarket as you might want for the money. Honda's opted for this nine inch touchscreen for infotainment for the HRV hybrid. It's bolted onto the dashboard, doesn't really do anything for the premium feel of the car. However, it does have lots of information. The key infotainment features are here, including wireless Apple CarPlay and wide Android Auto. There's a digital speedo permanently displayed in the center of the instrument panel, which is great, but there's a whole lot of other stuff jammed in less clearly in here. There is a lot going on. The HRV Hybrid comes with a comprehensive package of Honda Sensing driver aids, including AEB, which detects pedestrians and cyclists day or night and operates at speeds up to 200 kilometers an hour. Get into the rear seat of the HRV Hybrid and knee and legroom is spectacular for a car of this size. But headroom for adults is curtailed if you lean back into the headrest because of the sloping roof line. The HRV only has two seats in the rear. That's right, no middle seat belt. The upside is there's storage under the seats and they also fold up right out of the way. At 304 litres, the HRV Hybrid does not have a big boot, but it does quadruple in size when you flip down these rear seats. There's also a bit of underfloor storage, but most of that space is taken up by the lithium ion battery. There's no spare tyre under here, you just get a repair kit. Well, so far the jury's out on the hybrid HRV. Let's go for a drive though and see if that changes things. It's not how the engine goes or the handling that makes the first impression on you when you get into the HRV hybrid and start driving it. It's how high you sit. This is a real commanding driving position, much higher than rivals like the Toyota CHR and Mazda CX-3. The HRV will run in EV mode at low speed for short bursts and when rolling down a slope, but it never lasts too long. Once the electric motors and the petrol engine chime in together, it's obvious this is a more responsive HRV than any that's come before. Better acceleration from the lights and the pulling power to keep up with the traffic. However, as speeds rise, its advantage diminishes. As a tardy 10.6 second, not to 100 kilometer an hour time attests. Being quite a tall vehicle, you might think the HRV hybrid 
is a bit roly-poly in corners, but that's not really the case. It's pretty well tied down and pretty confident. That translates to a slightly firm ride, but it actually inspires confidence rather than annoyance. Sadly, the electric assist steering is a bit blur. Lighter, more feelsome steering would make this a nicer drive. When it's just rolling along on its electric motors, the HRV hybrid is pretty quiet. The Michelin Primacy tyres, however, do set up a bit of a roar on coarse chip roads. And when the petrol engine chimes in, which is often, it can be a bit intrusive too, especially when the CVT holds it at high consistent revs under acceleration. Fuel economy is definitely the payoff for the HRV Hybrid's powertrain complexities and peculiarities. Just 5.1 litres per 100 kilometres on test, and that's without trying to maximise EV running. Yep, there's no doubt the powertrain of the new HRV is the notable improvement compared to its predecessor. Ride comfort gets a tick too. The $125 cap price for each of your first five services is pretty impressive as well. Mind you, the intervals are only 10,000 kilometres apart, so they advantage people who drive less than the annual average. The HRV is protected by a five-year unlimited kilometre warranty, and the battery gets an eight-year warranty. So if you stump up $45,000 for a HRV hybrid, what are you getting? Impressive rear seat versatility, an improved drivetrain, a solid safety spec and reasonably resolved dynamics. Less wowing is the ambience up front and the headroom in the rear. You notice stuff like that more when you're paying a premium price, even if you're recouping some of that at the fuel pump. In the end, the Honda HRV Hybrid comes across as a competent effort, but pitched at a price where something that bit more special is expected. Look, it's not a bad car at all. It's just not a standout in a very competitive segment.